So in this video, I'm going to show you how to subtract fractions using the area model. So similar to the adding of fractions using the area model, we're going to use the concept of floors and rooms. And so each time you get a fraction, you need to remember that the first uh, fraction, the denominator of the first fraction, becomes the number of floors. The denominator of your fra second fraction becomes your number of rooms. So again, let's say we just had a fraction. I'm just going to show you how to draw this out one more time. Um, so again, the denominator of my first fraction becomes my number of floors, so my building will have two floors. And the denominator of my second fraction becomes the number of my rooms, so each room has uh, three, each floor has three rooms. The difference between adding and subtracting is that in this one, you will have to draw two identical diagrams. And I will explain how you use the diagrams in the next slide. So again, two separate diagrams, and then you go ahead and you subtract from that fraction fraction. So again, like I explained in the beginning of the last video, um, you already know the rule for subtracting fractions. And again, it's similar to adding fractions. You have to get the common denominator. Once you have a common denominator, you multiply whatever you need to multiply the denominator by, by your numerator, and then you go ahead and you subtract the two numerators. Although we know the rule, it is very important to understand how it looks. And that's the reason I do want you to use the area model on some of the questions that you work on so that you can see how a fraction is actually subtracted rather than sticking to a rule. So let's try it our first example. So the first example is I have one half minus a quarter. So we're going to do it first with the area model and then I will show you using the rule that the area model and the rule answer are exactly the same. So when I look at this question, I look at my two denominators, I know the number of floors my question is going to have, and uh, the number of rooms. So I go ahead and I start draw that in. So my building has two floors according to the first denominator, and then it has four rooms. So I draw it in, and like I said in the first part of this video, you need to draw two identical diagrams for you to be able to successfully do this. Now, in my first diagram, my first diagram will correlate with my first fraction. So one half of these rooms in this building are occupied. Okay, so I'm gonna color those in right there. Um, in my second fraction, so my second fraction correlates with my second diagram, and one quarter of the rooms in this building are occupied. Now subtraction works a little bit differently. So this f diagram becomes your measuring stick. So you need to now take away two rooms from the other diagram. So two rooms need to be subtracted. So if I subtract two of these rooms out, I am left with I am left with two rooms that are uh, not that are still being occupied even after we take out the other ones. So my answer to this fraction is going to be two over and how many rooms are there all together? So if each floor has four rooms, four times two is eight rooms. So the answer to my fraction is two eighths. And you know that this answer can be simplified, so you go ahead and you simplify it. You always try to get the most simplest answer. So we go ahead and we know that both these numbers can be divided into two. So my answer is one fourth. Now, so this is the answer I got using my area model. So now I want you to so now I'm going to show you that I can get the exact same answer when doing the rule that you know. And so, again, looking at the fraction that I have, which is right here, I'm going to apply the rule. So the rule says to get my common denominators. So I know that in the 2 times tables, 2 times 2 would equal 4. So I'm going to increase my denominator here by 2. Whatever I do to the uh, denominator, I have to do the numerator. So my fraction now changes to 2 over 4 minus 1 over 4, and when we subtract fractions, we leave the denominator the same, and we subtract the numerator to subtract 1 is 1 fourth. And you'll notice that both of my answers are exactly the same. So again, the area model shows you how to do it, whereas the rule can be applied just to solve the equation. So let's try a second example, and this time I do want you to try it at the same time as I'm doing so that you can practice as we go along. So automatically, by looking at the first fraction, I know how many floors my building is going to have. So I start drawing it out. My building is going to have three floors, and each floor is going to have five rooms. 
Okay, and again, two identical drawings of the identical, identical building for each of the fractions. And so I go ahead and I draw that in. Okay, so now my first building, one third of the building is occupied. So I go ahead and I X out one third of the building. In my second uh, building, one fifth of my building is occupied. And again, keep in mind that this is your measuring stick. So this is what you're using to take away from this. So when I go ahead and I subtract, I'm going to subtract this with one here, this one with one here, this one with one over here. And I'm left with two. So my fraction is going to be two over the number of rooms in this building, which is 15. And so my final answer, final fraction, when subtracted, is two over 15. And again, I'm going to show you that the answer is the same when you use the rule and to apply it onto the original fraction. So now one third, so we say the denominators three and five, what do they have in common? And when you try to find the lowest common multiple, you'll notice that the fraction is 15. So three times five gives me 15. Whatever I do the denominator, I do the numerator. And five times three gives me 15. Again, whatever I do the denominator, I do the numerator. So again, my new fraction is five over 15 minus 3 over 15. So 3 minus, sorry, 5 minus 3 equals 2 over 15. And again, you'll notice that regardless of which method I use, I end up with the exact same answer. Okay, moving on to the last example that I'm going to give you before I get you to try one on your own is this fraction right here. So 3 over 4 minus 2 over 6. So again, I know that from drawing my buildings, my building is going to have four floors. So I go ahead and put those in, and each of those floors is going to have six rooms. There we go. And again, two identical buildings. So again, four floors and six rooms. Perfect. So my first building has three fourths of this building occupied. So three fourths of this building would mean that that's one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths of this building is occupied. My second fraction says that two sixths of this building is occupied. So, I'll go ahead and X those out. So that's one sixth, and two sixths of this building is occupied. So now I take these, the the ones that are occupied in the second fraction, and I subtract them from the first building. So the occupants in the in the second building take out the occupants in the second building. And so again, let's let's just scratch them out as we go along. So one. Two, three, and four. That's our first and our second batch. One, two, three, and four. That leaves me with how many occupants in my building. So I go ahead and I count. I go one, two, again. So I'll show you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That means my building still has ten occupants left in it. And how many rooms all together in this building? There are a total of 24 rooms. So my answer to this fraction is 10 over 24. And again, I'll show it to you using the method that you know, which is finding the common denominators. And so between the uh, four times tables and the six times tables, which is the greatest common multiple, and I say that 24 is the greatest common multiple that I can get, that's sorry, the lowest common multiple that I can get. So it's four times six, Whatever I do the denominator, I do the numerator. And again, same thing on the other side. It's 6 times 4. Whatever I do the denominator, I do to my numerator. Uh, so I keep going. 3 times 6 is 18. 
over 24, that's my new fraction, subtract 8 times 24, and when I go ahead and I subtract that, my denominator remains exactly the same. My numerator, 18 subtract 8, is 10. And you'll notice again that my fraction is exactly the same regardless of which method I use. But again, I do want you to practice using the area model so that you can see how these fractions are actually subtracted from each other rather than sticking to a simple rule. Now here's the last fraction. So... This one I do want you to try, so I'm going to ask you now to pause your video, try the equation, and then come back to me as soon as you have an answer. Okay, so welcome back, and I'm going to go through this with you now. So hopefully you already have an answer, so you're just verifying your answer with the answer that I give you. So uh, looking at my two denominators, I know that my building has three floors, and my building has eight rooms. One. And what I love about this is if you count this now, I actually have fewer rooms than I need. I can just simply add them on to make sure I have enough. And so let me just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more. So I can just add that right on. And again, two identical drawings. So again, I need to make that a bit longer this time. Three floors and eight rooms on each floor. One, two, three, four, six. So that should be eight rooms. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. So again, let's go ahead and mark off the tenants in the floors that are living there. And so the first one says two thirds of this building is occupied. So if two thirds of this building is occupied, let's scratch out two thirds of this building. So that is going to be one third of this building. And that is two thirds of this building has people living in it. This building, on the other hand, has four-eighths of its building occupied. So let's count out four-eighths. So that's two-eighths, three-eighths, and four-eighths. So again, like I told you guys before, we use one of them as our measuring stick. And so we're going to be using the numbers in this one as our measuring stick. So I know we're going to cross out three at a time. So if that's three, I cross out my first three. I cross out another three occupants. I'm gonna go ahead and cross out another three, so those three. And I'm gonna cross out my final three. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four. Four occupants still living in my building and altogether there are 24 rooms in this building. Okay, so again, very simple, using the area model, being able to come up with an answer. And again, we're gonna verify our answer one more time using the method that you know as um, a method that works for subtracting fractions. This is to find a common denominator. So I look at uh, my denominators, three and eight, and I need to find the lowest common multiple. So three and eight, the lowest common multiple happens to be 24. So 3 times 8 is 24, and 8 times 3 is 24. Again, whatever I do to the denominator, I do to my numerator. And so uh, my new fraction is 16 over 24 minus 12 over 24. And when I subtract it, again, my denominator remains the same. 16 minus 12 is 4 over 24. And again, my answers are identical. So I hope you got that and I hope you understand it. Um, you will be doing review questions in class, so review the video if you have to. Make sure you make notes and make sure you've tried all the questions so that you do have a grasp on this concept.